more. We can never be content with what we have. And we're always just wanting more and getting ourselves in deeper trouble because of it. Paul talks about that in the book of Philippians. We're going to be in chapter 4 and we're going to look at verse 10 through 14. And Paul is talking to the church and he had gone through a difficult time and he finds himself in prison right now and he writes to them and he says, how I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. See, they had helped him in the past, but they couldn't help him in the past. And he's saying, I want to thank you for being concerned about me again. I know that you have always been concerned about me, but you didn't have the chance to help me. So then he says, not that I have ever, that I was ever in need. He goes, I've learned how to be content with whatever I have. He goes, I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or with little. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Even so, you have done well to share with me in my present difficulty. Lord, help us to really be able to take something for us tonight in our life, in our family, in our home, in our ministry, in our business, what we could understand from your word. And I pray this in the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Have, you ever, have you ever noticed how much money matters and how much it matters to our lives and how much money you make is never enough? It's always, you always want more. In a recent study they did with the US News and World Report, they asked people what would be enough? How much money would be enough? And they took people at different categories of income. People that were making $20,000 or less a year said that they would be happy and enough would be $52,000 a year. People that were making $100,000 a year said $196,000 a year would be enough. It was almost double. Everyone they asked was always double, double, double. If I just make double, then I'll be happy. Yet, you know what, statistically it shows that the more you make, the more you spend, and the more you keep spending, and the deeper you get yourself into a hole. So enough isn't in our wallet, but it's in our heart. You see, enough is right here. It's not back here. And we've got to understand that because what we have in our wallet isn't going to make you content if you haven't settled that issue with the Lord. And so we learned to, that we could be satisfied with the Lord, but we have to really change our attitude. Contentment is an issue of attitude and not about your wealth. And the way you get there and the way you understand that is by first really understanding that don't fall into the lures of consumerism. It's amazing how television and radio tries to grab you. I mean, think about it. They start advertising Christmas nowadays in October. And now is Easter, so they're advertising Easter and the dress you have to have if you're gonna have a happy Easter. The shoes you have to have to have a happy Easter. The candy you have to have, and on and on and on and on. It's about consumerism saying you can't live without it, yet you know what? We're still alive. We're still here. We made it without it but we don't think we can and we get ourselves deeper and deeper and deeper in trouble. And before you know it, you can't find your way out. And we've got to understand that not everything you see and hear about, you have to have. And not everything that you see and hear on television commercials is even accurate or true. Some of that stuff is stuff that you wanted so desperately and you don't even know where it is anymore. You, you ordered it and you forgot you even have it. 
the book of Proverbs, chapter 24, verse, uh, chapter 24, verse 27 says, do your planning and prepare your fields before building your house. In other words, he's saying, get a plan, set a plan, and don't be sucked into the lures of consumerism. You see, the consumer lures are all kinds, but one of them is that we feel that we deserve what we want. I work hard, I deserve it. And you know what? When it comes in, and it comes in with nothing, we came into this world with nothing and we're gonna leave with nothing. Yet, I gotta have it. I deserve it. I want it. And it's like, we're putting ourselves in a situation that we dig ourselves deeper and deeper and deeper. And we're finding out that stuff doesn't make you content. Another lure is that we shouldn't have to wait for what we want. I don't wanna wait. So 90 days, same as cash. And they get you in there and you don't pay it off in 90 days and then you start paying 24% interest and it's a fortune. Or I'll get a credit card. Do you know that they're giving college students credit cards now? And did you know that the average student is leaving college after they graduate with $8,500 of credit card bills? $8,500. And you know what they say most of those charges are? On pizza and food. It's like, why? Because they lure them in. They lure them in, have fun now, fun now, pay later, and you're paying forever. They lure you because we can't wait. We gotta have it now. It's the, the rent to own. You could buy a TV that would cost you $500 at the store, but you could just make weekly payments and you end up paying $2,000 for a $500 TV because I gotta have it now. We've got to understand how to say, slow down, we don't have to jump at this. Paul said it, I've learned to live off of whatever I have. I've learned to be content. I'm not constantly seeking more. Another lure is that you shouldn't have to work for what you want. They have this mentality now that people owe it to us. People have this mentality like, I shouldn't have to work for it. I've worked plenty in my life. They ought to just give it to me. And people are taking what's not theirs. They're just taking stuff that's not theirs and it's destroying lives and people are stealing and companies are losing. So then they pass the cost on because prices have to go up because of loss. And it's a ridiculous cycle because people have bought into this idea that they don't have to work for it. Who cares? Walmart's a huge corporation. They're not gonna miss a few items and it affects. And then we have people that we think that if we just get what we want, we'll be content. And if I just get that, I'll be so happy. I'll finally have arrived. You get the brand new car and by the time you get home, the new car smells gone. It smells like you and no offense, but do but you know what I mean? It's like the thrill is gone. It's like, what happened? Haven't you ever needed something so bad and you couldn't live without it? And now you don't know where it is? It's like, where is that thing anyway? It's like, wow, but you couldn't live without it. I think of most of us have heard of Howard Hughes. He found out that nothing makes you content. He had millions and millions, if not billions, and nothing made him content. We don't have to have millions to find out sometimes that we're not content and we're looking in all the wrong places. You see, Timothy talks about, or Paul talks of this in Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter six, verse six through 10, Paul says, yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. After all, we brought nothing with us when we came into the world and we can't take anything with us when we leave. So if we have enough food, and clothing, let us be content. 
But people who long to be rich fall into the temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. The love of money, not money, but the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. Don't get caught into that lure. Don't get caught into that kind of thinking. That's why Paul clearly says, he goes, not that I ever am in need because I've learned to live on nothing. I've learned to be content with whatever I have. You've got to be able to get there. Second thing we have to do is we've got to discipline our material desires. You've got to discipline your material desires. Look what he says in Proverbs 25, 28. 28. Proverbs 25, verse 28. A person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. No, you're going to get, you're going to get blasted from every side you're going to get blindsided because you're not prepared you're not guarded you're not you don't have a plan you've got to discipline yourself and say i can't keep going there i can't keep spending this i can't keep doing this it could be anything it could be going to a flea market it could be going to the thrift store it could be going to garage sales but you're out of control You've got two storage bins full of stuff and you still don't have enough. It's like you get caught up and all of a sudden this materialistic desire just grabs a hold of you. You've got to set limits for yourself. Leo Tolstoy, an author, wrote a story about a man who wanted more and more and more land and more and more and more land. So he had made a deal with this man who had a huge parcel of land. And he said, I'll tell you what. He goes, if you'll let me walk your land. He goes, whatever bit of land I can cover in the time frame you give me, I get to buy. And the man said, okay. So he took off walking and he walked a huge parcel of land. And time was about to end and he crossed the finish line. And he cheered and rejoiced, yes, I get all that land. And he fell over dead from a massive heart attack. And he found out all he needed was a six by three plot of land. Man, when I saw that story, I said, man, that'll preach, baby. That'll preach. How many times are we just fighting to have something so desperately only to lose things we have? What is the profit of man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? What is the profit of man to gain the whole world and lose his family? What is the profit of woman to gain the whole world and lose her family? What does it profit us? We've got to get discipline. We've got to stay focused and we've got to really take a good look. We've got to see God, what am I going to do? We've got to be able to, to discipline ourselves against these materialistic urges that we face. So how do you do that? Well, first, set and keep boundaries and limits. Set and keep boundaries and limits. We give money away to people that we don't even like sometimes. What's wrong with, what's wrong with us? We give money to show off. We, we try to help people that when we're sinking and we're helping others, I was able to help them. But the Bible says use wisdom. You're sinking and you're help. You're not in a position to help somebody right now. I know your heart's right, but your wallet's not. You've got responsibilities for your own life and you're helping others. I've gotten myself in a lot of trouble doing that before. I'm giving out resources that are supposed to be for my family to others. It's like we've got to be able to put the right measure and the right boundaries and the right limits. Second is... Learn to live on less than what you make. Live on less than what you make. You know what? It's amazing. People that want to buy a house, they go find out what they qualify for. And instead of saying, wow, we qualified for a $190,000 home. Let's look for a $190,000 home. No, don't do that. 
because you've got to furnish it and you've got to pay insurance and you've got to be okay, have upkeep and you've got to, you got to. So instead, why not buy a $140,000 home and you have this cushion to be able to breathe and not overspend? But I qualify for that. I qualified for $30,000. I'm going to buy a $30,000 car. Why not buy a $15,000 car that's really, really good and you could save yourself a whole chunk of money? But people don't do that. They end up just wanting to, to spend all they possibly can. They spend the maximum instead of saying, I just need what I need. I don't have to keep going after what I want. Now, there's nothing wrong with having a goal, but it's not right when you're sacrificing your family for stuff. It's important that you keep everything in perspective. Another thing, we need to be frugal and simple. Quit being so elaborate. Do you know, I don't know if you read recently, uh, Home Depot opened a new store called Expo. And it's real high-end stuff. Like they have water faucets that cost $2,500. I thought, what's the difference? They both give water. <laughs> Are you with me? But what's wrong with us? People just like spending and spending and spending. In the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 31 through 33, it says, so don't worry about these things saying, what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? What are we going to wear? He says, these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly father already knows all your needs. So he goes on to say, so seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. See, God's gonna give you what you need instead of being crazy and go spending all this money that you don't need to spend. Be frugal, be wise, recycle, reuse stuff, rebuild it if you can. If not, then get something but reasonably priced. Be real. Third thing we need to do is Become a legend in your own time with your giving. Become a legend in your own time. That people go, my gosh, that sister, that brother, man, they're amazing. They're givers. They give to the kingdom. They give to people. They help. They're amazing. You see, materialism is really a word for me. What I want, me, 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 me where God is saying, you know what? Take care of your needs, not your wants. Take care of your needs, and that way you can help others. There's people in great need. There's people that are broken and hurting. There's people that are overwhelmed with life. Do you know that Albuquerque is one of the highest cities of poverty in the United States? New Mexico is 49th in poverty. We were 50, we moved up a notch. And that's awesome. But that means we're still hurting. The unemployment rate is still one of the highest in the state of New Mexico. New Mexico and Alaska has the highest unemployment rate right now. Yet the unemployment rate is going down quickly in other areas of the country. So New Mexico is lagging behind. We haven't bounced back from this recession that hit us. Do you know that we're one of the cities that is lacking the most nutrients and food supply in people's lives? That's why the Roadrunner Food Bank and the food, our food bank, we give out endless, endless bags of food to people of all walks of life. Because you know what? They, they're not making it to have enough food on their table. And Roadrunner Food Bank said, for every person that they give food to, there's two others that have none. We give out to close to 400 individuals that come to our church every month seeking food. And we're giving them food for their family. So those 400 people represent 1,600 to maybe 2,200 people that we're helping put some food on their table. Every bit helps, but 
it's, it's, we're in a difficult time. So now's a time where you could become a legend in your own time. A legend where you're a giver, you're, you're one that blesses others. Don't do it with hurting your family, but when you go to the grocery store, maybe you, maybe you could buy a couple of extra cans of food. Maybe you could find someone in your neighborhood that's hurting. Someone that has a large family or, or older people that are very, very fixed income and you could just take them a bag of food and say, hey, we just, you know, we're thinking about you. God bless you and be a blessing to them. Become a legend in your giving. Become a legend in your own time. Become a legend in the things that you do. In the book of Proverbs chapter 22, verse nine, it says, blessed are those who are generous because they feed the poor. Proverbs eleven twenty five 25 says, the generous will be prosper, will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Isn't that the truth? When you help somebody, you just feel like, man, that's awesome. We were able to do something. We we're able to help out. We we're able to just extend the love. We we're ex- ex- extend some love of giving. One time, Natalie Cole, the singer, shared a story about her mom and said her mom was coming home one night and got a flat tire and didn't know what she was going to do. This man came by and he stopped in the middle of the rain and she was in the car and he said, I'll be more than happy to fix your tire. I'm not here to hurt you. She never got out of the car. He took care of the car, fixed the tire in the, in the pouring, pouring rain and just blessed her and said, look, I'm going to follow you home to make sure everything gets home right. And, and so he did follow her home and she got the man's name. Later on, they sent him a, a check in the mail for $1,000. This man said that he had gotten to the bottom of his savings and his family was broke and hurting and they needed $1,000 to make it through to pay every bill that they had. And it came right at a time that they needed it, but they didn't know where it was gonna come from. And God met that need without them even knowing just because they took time to be a giver. It's a blessing. A similar story happened here in Albuquerque recently. I don't know if you saw on the channel four the pay it forward. A young kid from Atrisco Heritage High School was on his way home and he saw a lady broke down on the side of the road and he, it was pouring cats and dogs and he got out and fixed her flat and she got his name but she forgot to write it, write down his phone number. So she went to Atrisco Heritage and said, I know you can't give out student's name but this young man took care of me in the middle of the rain and he was sopping wet and he took care of me and my little babies. I had my two small children in the car. I want to bless him. So they finally were able to track down his name because the school couldn't give out any information and make a long story short, this young boy was given $400 for his valiant effort of helping this woman. You see, all he did was stop to to be a legend in his own time. He didn't do it for fame and fortune. He just did it to help, but yet he came out in the limelight. He came out the hero for that time. It's a time that you and I step up. Freely we have received, freely we should give. And say, God, help me to be a blessing. Help me to share, Lord God. Help me to to understand what generosity is. And last is we've got to learn once again, to have a heart of gratitude. People don't say thank you very much anymore. Have you noticed that? If you notice you could hold the door open for somebody and they don't say thank you. You could stop and let someone go through or let someone in. They don't say thank you. It's like, what happened to gratitude? What happened to courtesy? What happened to manners? You know what? It's time that we once again be those people a people of gratitude, a people to to really praise God, a people to say thank you. I I love what Paul writes in Ephesians chapter five, verse 18 through 20. He says, don't be drunk with wine because 
you're going to ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing spiritual songs among yourself and making music to the Lord with your hearts. And give thanks to, for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, man, learn to rejoice. Learn to give thanks for everything. Everything we have is a gift. Everything we have comes from above. All good things come from above. Everything that we've worked so hard for, God has provided. And we need to be able to say, thank you, Lord. We need to be able to say, thank you, Father. We need to be able to rejoice and to really say thank you for all that you've done. Yet so many times we, we forget to say thank you. We forget to thank God and take that moment to say, God, thank you in your infinite wisdom that you took care of me and my family and you were able to use me to help others. Thank you, Lord. So whatever we have, you've got to understand is more than enough. You've got to understand that. <clears throat> Did you know that America's poverty is most countries' wealth? Did you know that someone that lives on poverty level in the United States at $12,000 a year, that's $1,000 a month, is considered wealthy for 92% of all countries? Now think about that. What's our poverty is their riches. We've got to say thank you, God, for being so wonderful. So whatever you have, enjoy it. Learn to enjoy it. Learn to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. They recently had a camera crew going through the cancer center. They came to a young eight-year-old girl, and she had cancer, and they asked her what she wanted. They go, is there anything you want? And she said, you know, I have these two sticker books and I have this doll. I have enough. Now when I heard that, I said, oh my God, God, that we would have that heart, that we would have enough with that which you've given us, that we would be content, that we would say, I have enough. I don't need any more. But we just keep accumulating more and more and more and more. In the book of Hebrews 13, verse 5, he says, don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. Help us be satisfied with enough. God, help us to be satisfied with enough to be able to say, thank you, Lord, for that which you've given me. Thank you, Lord, for that which I have. Help me to bless others. Help me to help others. Help me to minister to others. Help me to take them to a whole different level of living. As I was sharing with you the note that we got in February, the lady that said, I'm so sorry it's taken so long to write you. But I got a call from you at Christmas time to come and get a food basket. And I said, you've got to be wrong. I've never been to your church in my life. And I don't even know a person from your church. Are you sure it's me? And the person from our office that called said, well, here's your name and here's your phone number. I don't know how we got it, except this is for you. She came and got the basket and she said, You'll never know how desperately me and my children needed it. I don't know how you got our name, but I thank you so much for being a church that reaches out to people you don't even know. We've learned to be a generous church. We've learned to be a generous people. We're not a rich people. We're just hardworking people. They call us blue collar workers. Some of you are white collar. And you're even an upper management or upper office, but the majority of us just blue collar workers that are plugging away to feed our family and to take care of our needs. Yet God has taught us how to give to others. Let enough be enough. 
enough is enough. It really is. And we're able to say, thank you, God, for the things that you've provided. Thank you, God, for the things that you've given. Thank you, God, for the things that you've filled us with. So rejoice and say thank you for all that you've done and all you continue to do. Some of you are in great need right now. Cry out to God and say, God, I have great need. Make sure you have wisdom because sometimes God gives us resources and we don't use it on what we're supposed to. We end up using it wrong. So say, God, help me to use it wisely. Help me to exercise wisdom. Help me to do it right. Help me to be a blessing and not a curse. To uplift and not tear down. Father, we love you. Father, we thank you for all that you've done. I pray blessing over our congregation, Lord. Father, some that are struggling and they're doing everything right. And others, Father God, that are struggling because they keep making the same wrong mistakes. Heavenly Father, I pray that, Lord, you teach us how to have an attitude of gratitude and to really be able to set clear-cut boundaries and to use the resources that you give us wisely so that we don't get caught up into the lures of just consumerism and wanting more and more and more, but instead trusting you for the things that we truly need and helping others in areas of their need. Father, I pray guidance and blessing, honor and destruction over the things that we need to destroy out of our life. Father, help us to tear them down, to get them out of our life and to not be able to allow that back in. Destroy it, Father. And we pray blessing that, Father God, you will take the things that we have and multiply it to make things to be more than enough for us and our family and the people that we love. Father, strengthen us, bless us. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You Would you stand to your feet? Would you sing this out as a song of praise? And say thank you, Lord, for all that you are. Sing it as a prayer. Here at your feet, my desires and dreams I lay down. You are my life. You are my life and my treasure. The one that I can live without. Here at your feet, my desires and dreams I lay Here I am. 